Welcome back to Q Dads. I'm Steve, and the final episode of Dark Matter has dropped. And yes, of course, we were right about the ending. In a parallel world, there's a humble stay out there, but that's not me. All joking aside, the episode did answer a lot of questions. However, left us more at the end. Which version of Leighton and Blair did we see? And have we just witnessed different variants of the drug with potential different side effects? Of course, I'll be answering these questions towards the end because we know that you love our theories here at QDads. And of course, the past few episodes we've broken down, your support has been absolutely phenomenal. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe as although Dark Matter is coming to an end, there's a lot more science fiction series and Apple TV shows that we are going to be covering. Now, the episode starts with Jason 2 actually getting beaten by another Jason, who, by the looks of it, appears to be Bar Jason from the previous episode. Now, as we predicted in the last episode, we said it would have to be either Daniela or Charlie to have the idea of where to go, purely to stop all the Jasons having the same idea. This is confirmed, as Charlie has the idea, and takes them to a safe house from one of his friend's parents. Jason 1 talks to Charlie and Daniela, and they're kind of sad and unsure what to do, and where to go, and how this has all come about. But then, as we're kind of getting this slow pace, as Daniela catches up with reality, things start to escalate quick. Jason 1 goes on a computer, and goes to a site where he's communicating with multiple versions of himself. His username here is actually Jason71, meaning there's potentially 71 other Jasons on here before him. Now here, a lot of these are reaching out to each other, trying to figure out where Daniela and Charlie are, with some sharing videos of themselves and about how they feel and what they should do. Others trying to put some kind of lottery syndicate, where one lucky Jason gets to win the family, and a few Jasons actually suggest teaming up to wipe out the others. This scene really does open up all the possibilities, and actually gives us an insight into how many Jasons are actually in this world. Not only that, I think actually added a bit of comedy to a bleak situation, with some of the Jasons ridiculing each other. However, ultimately, they all agree they are doing things for the sake of Daniela and Charlie. Jason 1 even becomes paranoid because of this and starts to see people or lights outside at the safe house, presuming that he's not alone. But then he confines with Daniela and they chat about other versions of themselves. Now, at the start of the episode, I did still wonder if Jason 1, that we were seeing on the screen, was in fact an imposter, like a few people alluded to in the last episode, as, at times, it felt like the show was teasing us. And I say that because in the next scene with Bar Jason and Jason 2 having a conversation and trying to figure out what to do, Bar Jason reveals that he was actually on the same trajectory as Jason 1. He was kidnapped in the same way, he was taken to another world where Ryan was killed, where Amanda helped him to escape, and of course Daniela died. But the only difference with this world was that Amanda actually died in some kind of forest world, which we saw in probably a better state than Jason described it. At first I did wonder if that was the forest world where we saw the weird creature. I was hoping she might be attacked by it so we get a little bit more on that, but unfortunately that's not the case. And it was only at that point I realised this is a completely different Jason, who actually comes up with a clever idea of bringing Blair in a last ditch attempt to track her car. Now she arrives at the house in search of Jason, who to her knowledge is tied up in a cupboard, and then Bar Jason tries to get her phone off her to track her car, which obviously Jason 1 has taken. This doesn't end up well, and Bar Jason actually gets maced in the face by Blair, who demands answers, but the fact later on in the episode, Jason 2 escapes, I can only presume here that Blair is dead or in fact helped Jason 2, which does seem weird as Blair was the one telling Daniela to track Jason 2 in the first place. Daniela and Jason reconnect, shall I say, and then discuss about what to do, as well as Daniela trying to read through all of the messages on the chat room. Now, as we come to the final few scenes of the episode, this is where things for us get really interesting. So Jason 1 sees an intruder and obviously goes to investigate and this is where we actually have multiple Jasons trying to get to the house as we hear gunshots in the background and Jasons falling down. Jason 1 is confronted by, yes, you guessed it, another Jason who holds him at gunpoint for his clothes and in a very shocking twist, that Jason is shot in the head 
by none other than Jason too. He then goes on to explain he isn't here to try and get what Jason has, but he's here to help instead. The fact that Jason too was actually a good guy is baffling. I feel a little bit let down by this. We've built up this whole season for a Jason on Jason fight, but in the end, Jason 2 helps Daniela, Charlie and Jason 1 leave the house safely. I also want to point out here, Jason 2 does confirm that he made the box, and all of this is his fault. Now, Ben wanted me to say, this confirms his theory that Jason 2 is the original Jason, whereas I still don't think that's the case. Creating the box didn't create the other worlds, they already existed. Seeing as we already knew Jason 2 created the box, there's nothing new here. Neither of the Jasons we have seen could be the original timeline, as each of them could have branched off from another. Mind boggling I know, but still, that's what you get with multiple universes. Jason 1, Daniela and Charlie actually leave and head to the box with all the ampules Jason left them, and as well bringing along Max for the ride. It's like he's reconnected the family in some kind of weird redemption arc. And we say weird, because in the video, you can see there are 45 vials left. But if you go back to episode 8, there were more than 48. We assume he stole a full pack when he went back to his world to get more. So he probably has 5 vials to himself. As I can only confirm from the previous episode, that the box has 47 ampules in it, due to the shots we get on screen. Of course, the craziest scene at the end with multiple Jasons all waiting outside the box like lost puppies looking for affection. But actually, if you think about it, this is only a handful of Jasons, as technically there could still be hundreds of Jasons roaming around in the world trying to track down Jason 1, and also hundreds of Jasons that are not even aware that Daniela and Charlie have gone, and are still probably camping at the house or searching the streets for them, not knowing that all these other Jasons exist. Essentially, an infinite number, although I think it would have been nice to see here an infinite number of Jasons reflected, kind of like how we see the corridor of infinity that just stretches on. I think for me it would have been a nice scene. Anyway, they all clear a path, with some more reluctant than others, to allow Jason, Daniela and Charlie to escape this reality. And here we get several shots at the end, seeing different versions of Amanda, Ryan, Blair and Leighton, all in their own realities, as well as Jason 1, Daniela and Charlie exiting theirs, and I'm going to touch on each point individually. Now firstly, what we predicted in last week's breakdown was it had to be Daniela who thinks of a world and where to go. However, in the final scene, Charlie opened the door and led the others to a new reality. Now, this is interesting, because if it's Charlie that decided where they went, then other Jasons will clearly be able to follow. As I mentioned last week, you can only go to a world where you existed. So if Daniela had picked the world, they would now at least be safe from Jason's. But if Charlie picked it, then we can only assume he exists because Jason and Daniela exist in this world. Unless we're getting a plot twist in the future where Charlie is adopted. I mean, the Jasons don't have ampules to follow. But if they did, they would now at least be able to attempt to find Daniela and Charlie. Whereas, had Daniela chosen the destination, they would have to get another version of her to be able to even consider following them. Obviously, the question stems around what reality has Charlie gone to? Is this one where Max exists, or is it something more simple? Now, I was going to say the world with Amanda and Ryan, but I don't think that's the case. I think Jason would probably want to avoid that world, as he believes he's the only Jason to get his Amanda to a world where she's happy. Not only that, he also loves her. It would have been nice for Jason 1 to tell Jason 2 his Amanda is still out there, giving him a chance at a happy ending too. Leading on from that with Ryan and Amanda. Now we see Ryan presumably perfecting the formula for the ampules, meaning has Ryan just created the means to travel through different realities and potentially starting this all over again? But not only that, he actually then looks for Amanda at the very end. Although these two individuals have never met, it seems that Ryan was looking for Amanda, and that makes us both question. Now, Ben's thoughts on this are, although Ryan knows the existence of Amanda 2 already, based on previous conversations with Jason 2, how did he know that this version of Amanda is from the same reality? How much digging has he had to do behind the scenes to find that information out? And of course, does this mean this will lead them all back to the same reality? Which of course, now, Jason 1 is no longer in. Whereas, 
I question the whole scene altogether. Are we seeing two different Ryans? I don't recall Jason 2 mentioning Amanda to Ryan. So could we have the Ryan creating the new solution be Ryan 1 and the Ryan at the end meeting Amanda being Ryan 2 or at least another variant of him? Other than that, my mind wonders further. Ryan 1 is brilliant, but how brilliant is he? If we think about other shows when it comes to multiverse, it's normally each universe has some slight difference in frequency that humans or beings give off. Could Ryan have stumbled onto something similar? This would at least then explain how he found Amanda without knowing her. Is he able to track people who have been in the box? Is this what his new solution does? As clearly it was a different colour. Moving on, we also then get Blair, who seems to be saying goodbye to her world. Now, we assume this is the Blair from the bug world, which again, has not been explained. Now, where is she heading? As clearly, unless she makes her way home in one go, she'll be making a lot more Blairs too. Could she be heading for Jason too? As she knows he's out there somewhere. And of course, Leighton. Now, I'm going to be honest, I'm not 100% sure if this is Leighton 1 or 2, so I presume that this is Leighton 1, because he left his box knowing where to go, and what to do, and how to control the box. Meaning he can then travel these realities. As he also did look a bit sharper than Leighton 2. And of course, the last time we saw Leighton 2, he was bruised, battered and beaten. And I don't think we've actually seen him again. So at this point, I suppose we're presuming he's dead. Now yes, of course, you're probably thinking at this point, you've not discussed the ampules. Well, here we go. So Leighton actually injected into his hand now. This had a shade of green, which is obviously different from the usual blue tone that we've been seeing throughout the series. And in the scene where Ryan was perfecting the serum, that had a tint of purple. So I asked myself the question, are these versions of the drugs just different colours because of the different realities and the different chemicals, but they have the same reaction and the same effects? Or do the different colours result in different effects? Could the green indicate some kind of time travel with the serum, considering that Leighton did look a bit steampunk in that scene? And does the purple indicate something else, like a more permanent version, allowing you to just travel on the box whenever you want? Or, as I speculate, can it be used in some other way to track others with exposure to the box? The overall episode was great and the series in fact was awesome. We did have a slow start and a few episodes did have a bit of a slow pace, but I think overall the mystique of the episodes has kept us all hooked. From the infinite number of Jasons and possibilities, and the confusion of which Jason is the real Jason, I think the slow pace was completely outweighed by the payoff in the later episodes. The last few episodes had me wanting more. I'm sad that this is the final. I do think Apple is set up for a season 2. Now, I know there's only one book. We've not read it, so I'm not sure if this is how it ends in the book. But regardless, I think we should get a season 2, as so many things have been left unanswered. Like, what has happened to Leighton 2? I know I keep asking, but Jason 2 has been told that Leighton 2 was missing. So could we see Jason 2 go looking for him? He does have enough ampules to swap worlds, maybe. Even double back to World 2 for more. What about the killer bees? They were introduced and left. I've heard other YouTubers and commenters explain this might have been foreshadowing of the infinite Jason problem, as there might have only been one bee that became infinite like Jason's, down to Blair's choices. Either way, they look strange, and so did the thing from episode 3. What has caused these creatures? What will Jason 2 do now with his ampules? And what happens to all the Jasons in World 1? So, did you like the ending? What do you think is going to happen next? as we can't wait to read your theories. Thank you all for watching. We've enjoyed your comments and support so much. So for the final time in this season, please like and subscribe as it helps us to grow. And as always, we'll catch you next time with something new.